Hello, in this video we will talk about how to improve switching time of a pin diode switch. This would be useful if you have a switch, but the switching time is not sufficient. In the following few minutes I will give you five tips on how to improve your circuit. So let's get to it. The switching speed depends on the driver circuit, the pin diode itself, as well as other circuit components. The number one and most overlooked in the literature reason for long dead time is that it takes time for the signal to charge all the capacitors while propagating from one port to another. To reduce this time, you need to reduce this capacitance. I refer to capacitors C1, C2, C3, and C4 in this simple SPDT switch. The purpose of the capacitors is to prevent DC signal flowing into the load. So they should be large to be transparent for the RF signal. However, this is not good for the dead time. Let's consider the case when the receiver port is connected to the common antenna port on the top of the circuit. The RF signal will flow through the capacitors C1 and C3. If the value of the capacitors is 10 nanofarad, the signal at the receiver port will look like this. As we can see, the signal settles approximately 30 microseconds after the switch was turned on. Now, if we change these, those capacitors to one nanofarad, the dead time is significantly lower. Just keep in mind, you cannot endlessly reduce the capacitance because it will affect the lowest frequency of operation of the switch. Also remember, this as well valid for the coupling capacitors of all subsequent stages. For example, the receiver consists of low noise amplifiers, which certainly contain coupling capacitors, which might also need to be reduced. During pin diode turn off, a large current flow is limited by the impedance of the voltage source and the circuitry of the bias feed to the pin diode. The RF choke and the low pass filter to supply the bias current should have a very low DC impedance. In other words, use inductors with lowest possible resistance. Of course, ideal inductors have zero resistance, but in practice, the parasitic resistance is quite significant. Just try to get rid of that. Switching speed can be increased by reducing the source impedance of the driver, allowing high reverse current to flow. Using pin diodes with lower carrier lifetime can improve switching speed. Just keep in mind, carrier lifetime in part also determines the lowest frequency of operation, so it cannot be too low. It is a trade-off. For example, carrier lifetime should not be much lower than one microsecond to adequately switch signals down to 10 megahertz. And the last tip, number five. As we have seen in the earlier example, the DC bias supply is isolated from the RF circuit by inserting low pass filter structure between the bias supply and the RF part of the circuit. Low pass filters may significantly increase the switching time of the pin diode. For example, if the switching time of one microsecond is needed, the low pass filter must show very little insertion loss to frequencies up to three megahertz. In other words, the filter's cutoff frequency should be at least three megahertz. Shorter switching times require higher filter cutoff frequencies, which may lead to constraints in switching low frequency RF signals. And finally, you might also want to increase isolation of any additional power suppliers if you use some in your diet biasing. I hope this short overview helps you to improve your switch. And remember, any component in the circuit can have an impact on the switching speed and good circuit modeling can help you to identify those components.